What's up y'all? Been a while since I've done a video about barbecue, but since we've got July 4th coming up, I know a lot of people are going to be trying to fucking lay it down for their families, uh, for their friends. You want to do a good job. Maybe you're not a pit master. First off, I want to say a little disclaimer. Sorry if you don't like the language. Uh, I don't care. Um, number two, sorry about the GoPro mic quality. I'm going to try to keep the GoPro in the same spot um, the whole time. That way at least it's consistently bad because what I've noticed, and nobody complains, so thank you guys for your patience with that, but I've noticed that it's worse. Like if I start fucking turning the GoPro around and stuff, fucking piece of shit $200 GoPro and the mic sounds like fucking I'm talking through my dog's asshole um anyway I've got my high tech script here to try and categorize this stuff and I've broken it down into about five things with subcategories that you can do to make sure your barbecue is a uh good success this this year round this isn't for only July 4th, but, you know, fuck it. Anyway, let's get into it. Tip number one, give yourself extra time. Plenty of extra time, okay? This is a pork butt or pork shoulder. Same thing. It, they, some people call it a butt. Some people call it a shoulder. It's not the pig's ass. That is the ham. We don't make fucking hams, except for, you know, when your 103-year-old grandma's making Christmas dinner. Um, nobody wants ham for 4th of July. Tip number one, don't buy a fucking ham. Buy a pork butt, if you're going to do one. You don't have to. We'll get to that. Point is, this pork butt is about 7 pounds, which is a pretty good size. It'll feed a lot of people. You can get them smaller than this. I would say, ideally, if you're feeding four, five, maybe six people. Realistically, you think about it in your fucking brain. You've got a brain. Uh, are you going to eat a pound of meat by yourself? Depending on how hefty your family is and how much they like barbecue is about, you know, you judge that in your, in your head. Now, I think in my head, I eat, you know, especially because I like a pulled pork sandwich, maybe a half pound for me maybe a quarter pound for the old lady, you know, so I'm thinking seven pounds is probably enough to feed 10 plus people, assuming that you're making other stuff too. Now I got a big family that eats a lot and I don't mean big in numbers. I mean, well, big in numbers, but numbers on the scale, big. So, but they're not big pulled pork people either. So this will be plenty for 10 people, easy. I'll have leftovers, I promise point is now remember give yourself extra rule of thumb is you need about one hour of cooking time per pound of meat at least with something big like this it's a little bit different with like ribs I'll talk about that in a second but like with something like this if you've got a five pound pork butt minimum five hours I would give myself eight because the thing is if you get it done early you're in the clear all you have to do if it's done early throw it in a crock pot just on the warm setting put it in the oven on the warm setting wrap it up throw it in a cooler you can leave this thing hot sitting in a cooler or in a crock pot for 12 hours it'll be fine you can cook it the day before throw it in the refrigerator heat it back up the next day in a crock pot or in the oven or whatever and your family unless they are barbecue aficionados are not going to notice the difference they're still going to think it's good and i'll talk about that in the next tip so don't worry about trying to finish the pork butt right when everybody's just about to eat because it's never going to happen you're never going to finish. It's always, always, 100% of the time, 
is gonna take you longer than you think it is. Something's gonna happen, your fucking fire is gonna die out, or you know, it's just gonna take a little bit. It's maybe it's it's finicky or something, maybe the fat's not rendering the way you want it to. Cause there is no fast route through this. If you do it fast, that's gonna make it shit. Okay? There's a lot, you see all this fat in here. When you're making barbecue, now burgers and dogs, we'll talk about burgers and dogs at the end. When you're making barbecue, all of this fat that runs through this meat, which this is frozen so you can't see, I'll show you on the ribs. This all needs time to break down. It doesn't start breaking down until 170 degrees up until t about 200 degrees is when it starts to get gooey and then it's no good. Past that, you're making fucking mush, okay? So most people cook ribs to about 195. Most people, non-competition barbecue people, like ribs at about 200 when they fall off the bone. Anything past that, 205, you're not going to die. It's fine. I'm just saying, try to keep it at 200. So you basically want, not too much time, but you want the meat to sit from that 170 to that 200 range for long enough. If you rush through it, you're not going to render the fat down, and then it's going to be chewy, okay? Nobody wants to sit there and chew on fat. You know what that is? You know what chewy is? Tough in most people's minds. That's what they think. They think, wow, this meat is tough. This is not good. Anyway, so take your time. Give yourself extra time is part number one. For example, I will be... I'm cooking this. My cookout's not until Saturday. I'm cooking this tomorrow. I'm going to spend all day cooking this. I'm going to make sure it's right. And then I'll either put it in the fridge overnight. I'm probably going to put it in the fridge overnight because I don't want to keep it warm overnight. I don't want it to get mushy. So I'll put it in the fridge overnight. All that fat will kind of solidify just a little bit more into like a lard. It won't be like this because it's already rendered once. And then I can just heat it back up the next day and serve it. Like I said... Nobody in my family is a fucking food critic, so they're not going to know the difference. I'll heat it back up on Saturday. Everybody will be happy. People want to eat on time. They don't want to sit there and be like, and I've done this. I've made the mistake. You know, when's this going to be done? How much longer on the ribs? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry. Tip number two. Use the oven. Um, if you do have a smoker... You've probably seen on a lot of these barbecue videos. And most of these guys will tell you, but some of them won't. You'll see, you know, guys will, um, they'll be cooking and then they'll get to the point where they're like, okay, we're ready to wrap the ribs. And then they'll put the ribs back on the smoker for another two hours or whatever. After you wrap something, if you've got ribs wrapped in aluminum foil, they're not taking in smoke anymore. So, my advice to you, same thing with pork butt, with ribs. Um, we're not, I'm going to talk about brisket, but that's if you're cooking brisket, you probably don't need these tips. Um, you don't have to put it... The only reason they're putting it back on the smoker is just for the video's sake it, and they're not trying to trick you but it's just like it looks weird if you put some people want to see like oh man he's got it on the smoker you know it's just an aesthetic thing there's no functional purpose after you have gotten the image the initial smoke on the meat and you've wrapped it up assuming that you're going to wrap it not i've fiddled around with wrapping and not wrapping don't worry about that this isn't a recipe video anyway um however you're going to do it once you've wrapped it up, once the smoke is already on there, if you want to put the oven on 220 and throw it in there, same thing. And what I like about it, especially with a big piece of meat like this pork butt, it, number one, I don't have to manage a smoker for 12 fucking hours. I only have to manage it for maybe eight or something like that while I'm getting the smoke on the meat. Once it's ready to wrap, I know I can put it in the oven, throw a thermometer in it, Put the oven on 225 and it's going to stay right at 225. There's no, you know, oh my God, do I need to put more charcoal on? Do I even need to add a stick of wood? 
no freaking out nice and easy man I can't believe we're already at 10 minutes I'm trying to do this quick but I talk a lot so but that's two out of five so maybe we can be done in an hour um, let's see for chicken I don't personally marinate pork um, I think it over I don't want pork to not taste like pork I don't want pork to uh, I, w I want it to taste like ribs like pork butt I don't want it to taste like fucking soy sauce or whatever or, or you know Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce whatever so I don't marinate pork chicken completely different story uh, you're not fucking five years old anymore your mom's boiled seasonless chicken is not gonna cut it anymore chicken is uh, good because it's very versatile and everybody likes it but it is bland naturally chicken needs a lot of help marinate your fucking chicken okay marinate it overnight if you can but at least for like an hour marinate it season it well I'm gonna show you some seasonings that I like I'm not too particular on chicken the only thing I can say is marinate it and season it with whatever you like I am gonna give you a tip on it um, so let's see Oh, also with chicken versus pork butt and ribs and stuff things like chicken steak pork chops uh, burgers hot dogs uh, sausages not so much um, things that are lean and I know people smoke chicken but I don't think it's good okay and I when I feed it to people I tell you what people like okay if it is a lean meat if it's not some big seven pound hunk of meat slab of ribs that's gonna take all day to get it tender if there's not that much fat in it to begin with like a piece of chicken grill it throw it on a charcoal grill if you have one if not put it in on a, a gas grill if not cook it in the oven um, and cook it on a good heat setting you want to cook chicken not hot and fast but you know normal and good and hot to get it because if you don't cook it hot the skin's not going to be crispy it's going to be all mushy it's going to be like some like your you want your fucking grandpa to be chewing on a piece of chicken skin gum for an hour no you don't so with chicken i always i use my weber charcoal grill i get i feel half one side up with charcoal nice and hot that's my hot side and then one side empty that's cool side I sear the fuck out of it and then I put it on there and it's done in 30 minutes it's grilled it's good if you cook it too long the little bit of fat that's in chicken the little bit of juice in there just drips right out and you know sayonara some people like to smoke it like I said I've never had smoked chicken that I thought what I've had it not bad never had it anywhere near grilled barbecue chicken um so while we're talking about uh seasonings and marinades um a cheat code sorry if this bag is loud a cheat code for marinades if you're not sure and if you're not sure about seasonings is one second let me Cheyenne moves the goddamn seasoning around every two seconds. Uh, where is it? Here's one. Uh, here's two. And there's my maple barbecue. Okay. A cheat code is, especially for your fat family that doesn't know anything about barbecue, everybody loves sugar okay so if you're not sure about a marinade and this is what I'm doing too something like this uh, Lowry's hickory brown sugar marinate your chicken in this grill it and they're gonna love it um, as for seasonings 
Um, this is pretty good. Grill Master Barbecue Seasoning. Um, it this once again and you don't want to make it too sweet so try to be careful if you do make something too sweet uh, you can balance it out by making it uh, a little bit spicy and then you'll have kind of like a sweet and spice if something's too sweet then it's too sweet but if you put a little spice on it you know a little bit of cayenne pepper something like that something light you know these white folks around here they don't like all that spicy stuff now unless you're in Louisiana so um, if you're talking about how white my family is you can throw like some black pepper on it and they act they go to sneezing and shit <laughs> but uh put some garlic on it, and they're like oh my god what is this did you you got ghost peppers on this <laughs> it's funny but everybody's taste buds are different um so like this has brown sugar in it too but uh usually what what you can do if you're not sure how it's going to taste give it a smell that's what i do how it smells is because when you smell something, it kind of flies by your taste buds too. It's almost they're very similar scents. How something smells is probably how it's gonna taste. So keep that in mind. Always smell everything. Put a little bit on your tongue. Fuck it. Don't snort it. This ain't party favors. This is uh, seasoning. This will burn the shit out of you. It ain't gonna keep you up. Um, another good one to use that pretty much always works Lowry seasoning salt this little bit of black pepper on just about anything you cannot go wrong big barbecue nerds on YouTube guys that run big restaurants they won't tell you but if you dig around enough and you find like videos of ex-employees that are willing to kind of sell the company secrets a little bit they'll be like yeah we use Lowry's the shit's just good okay all that like oh i make my own seasoning and and i put it in the shaker myself and and this is a custom blend <laughs> nine out of ten times it's not uh for pork this is what i like uh bad byron's butt rub i've used a lot of different stuff um this tastes good and one thing that i really like about it because it's got um it's got chipotle powder in it and paprika it gives pork now you could probably put this on chicken too don't get me just because it says pork it's just fucking spice you could put it on anything put it on your fucking uh on your wife tonight and, and see how she likes it see how you like it spice it up um this gives pork a really really pretty red color to it and if you look up some of my cooks and you see where I use this stuff you'll see what I'm talking about on ribs and stuff it just makes it look so good and people often eat with their eyes too so if something looks good to you then uh, it makes it taste better in your mouth because you're almost tricking yourself here's another one which this one's almost empty but I've been using it uh, maple barbecue by grill makes they make a lot of this um, the only one I would stay away from and you don't have to you could use it on chicken but you just have to be careful and this isn't something for beginners is why I would say I would kind of avoid it is things with mesquite um, mesquite is good and it smells good but it is a really really strong flavor um, it smells good and that's why people like it and you can smoke things with mesquite wood and it's good but you have to be careful because it's so strong that it can really, you know, overpower shit. Uh, part number four is um, avoid hard cooks. Now, like I said, if you're making a brisket, you probably don't need what I'm telling you. I've never successfully made a brisket yet because it takes so long and they're so finicky and you have to get a good one and know how to trim it just right. What I'm saying is, and I'm applying this to myself because I've done this before and I've made this mistake of like trying to make some kind of steak or whatever. Don't, uh, don't try and get into something that you're not comfortable doing. 
don't try and smoke a 16 hour brisket unless you've done it so many times that you know it's going to be good otherwise you're just wasting time and money for something that's not going to be good and if you have one bad dish in your lineup I think it brings everything else down you know if, if somebody gets a bad taste on their tongue they ju it just seems like it turns them off um, so things like pork butts pretty easy especially if you get a smaller one you get like a at Walmart I know you can get like four or five pound ones they or what you can do which you got to be a little bit careful with how you do it but it doesn't matter too much because I've just been winging it if you do get a bigger one and you don't think you're gonna eat it all um, before you cook it, cut it in half. You know, you're not gonna hurt nothing. You know, just cut it in half and, and cook what you wanna cook. You're not, it's fine. Just make sure it's big enough. I wouldn't make it less than like five or six pounds, to be honest, because you, like I said, you do want it to be able to, to be on there long enough to where, and be big enough to stand that heat for a good six or seven hours. That way you get good smoke in there. Um, tip with ribs. <laughs> my grocery store that I go to does not sell them and it makes me unhappy I know how to trim ribs but I don't like to these are pork spare ribs spare ribs are actually cheaper and better than baby back people buy baby back because they think baby back it must be tender that has nothing to do with it it's just a it's just a higher up part of the or it's either a lower or higher up part of the rib on the pig it's the same fucking thing you're spending more money for less as far as I'm concerned but uh, when you get spare ribs you can get spare ribs that look like fucking dinosaur ribs but what happens is up here along this channel here from here up is little tiny riblet bones and if you go to the hood grocery store like me you can actually buy riblets um, that's what some of the black folks like to buy I've never cooked them but you know, I'm sure they know how to make them real nice. Um, so up here is little tiny bones that if you don't know how to trim them off, you know, people can be eating the rib and then get a bone in their mouth. That's a turn off. You see this, this is kind of a, I mean, this is just gonna burn up and there's a bone right here. This is useless stuff. So what you can do if you go to the grocery store, if you see St. Louis ribs, Remember, it's all pig, okay? The fucking pig didn't grow up in St. Louis. It's just a cut, okay? What St. Louis ribs is, that's when the butcher goes ahead and does the work for you, and they basically will square this up. It's the same, it's a spare rib that they just already went and cut for you. It's gonna be nice and square. Um, they're probably gonna have taken, sometimes they take the membrane off, sometimes they don't. Um, but taking the membrane off is pretty fun and easy to do. I'm sure you're going to look up, a, if you're making ribs, I'm sure you're going to look up a recipe and that's like the first thing most people do. Some people don't do it. Uh, I don't know if it really makes a difference. I just like to peel it off. It's kind of like peeling a sunburn. It's fun to me. And then it, I think that peeling it off kind of lets you get some seasoning in on the backside, uh, which usually doesn't get a lot of love. And then also that membrane just doesn't seem like it's fun to eat. Um, some people say it's not necessary. I think they're just kind of being lazy about it, but what do I know? Uh, so yeah, get St. Louis ribs, uh, St. Louis cut ribs. If you can't find them, you know, you can get regular spare ribs and trim them, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of useless meat. Um, last tip. Oh yeah. Other easy shit chicken thighs chicken legs pork butt you know like I said last thing if you're gonna do burgers and dogs unless they're just for the kids buy the good stuff okay buy the good stuff get get a thing of hamburger meat make your own patties get some uh one second let me get my pantry here These are good, okay? Martin potato rolls. People see a burger on this, a handmade burger patty, a nice uh, slice white American cheese or cheddar, whatever kind of cheese you like. I like white American on a burger, but some people like yellow cheese. A choice of toppings, that's gonna turn people on. People like burgers and hot dogs. I have people come over to my cookouts 
and I'll make ribs and pork and shit that I know is good and they'll sit there and tear up burgers and dogs. It's like, dude, you could have went to Wendy's if you wanted burgers and dogs, but people like burgers. It's America. So make sure when you make your burger, you got it on this, not this. This is a no-no. The fuck? Fucking beetle on the counter. Okay. Well, that's trailer living for you. So yeah, if you're gonna make burgers and dogs, get good hot dog buns, get all beef hot dogs, you know, or get sausages if you really wanna go crazy. Same thing, but they taste better. Uh, get hamburger meat, make your own patties, or buy handmade patties, but that's kind of wasting money in my opinion. It's not fucking hard to make a hamburger patty. Uh, get good ingredients, get nice ketchup, tomatoes, lettuce, get it all out, ready to rock. Make it, if you're gonna make burgers and dogs, make the best burgers and dogs. But uh, we've already been talking for 25 minutes. There's no way I can cut this down to make it any fucking shorter. So um, with that said, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. Um, I should have addressed this in the beginning. I know I didn't do the review on the Family Dollar Smoker. I will do it eventually. I went to do it and then I didn't put the fucking water pan on the smoker because I was testing some things uh, and the pork butt, it got a little bit toasty in there and the pork butt started dripping fat on the fire and I set the smoker on fire, okay? That's what happened. I haven't messed with it since because I haven't been cooking a lot of barbecue. This is the first time I made barbecue in a little while. So that's what happened. Eventually. I will review the Family Dollar Smoker. I'm sorry I didn't do it yet. I didn't expect the video to get a gazillion fucking views. So, my bad. It's not, I don't get paid for this shit. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a nice day. Good luck with your barbecue. Leave any questions in the comments that you have or any other tips that you can think of. And goodbye.